So what is 32-bit float? We hear about this everywhere now. The wireless mic 2 records in 32-bit float if you enable it in settings on the pocket. If you don't enable the setting, the wireless mic working with the pocket camera will record in 16-bit. The mic 2 recording to itself records in 24-bit. And without the external mic, using the internal mics built into the pocket 3 itself, they record in 16-bit. So the best setting to use is the wireless mic 2 with 32-bit float recording set to on. But what is 32-bit float? Now I'm no audio engineer by any means, far from it, but I'll do my best to give you an overview. 32-bit float is not new and it's been used by audio engineers for ages. In fact, most audio editing programs have this setting and have done so for a long time. What is more recent though, is the ability to capture audio in 32-bit float. So why is this important? The bit depth of an audio recording is a dynamic range, which is the difference between the quietest recording to the very loudest recording without distortion. Now this has nothing to do with frequency or pitch of the sound. It just has to do with the amplitude, meaning how quiet or loud it is. So 16-bit, has a range of approximately 96 decibels. 24-bit has a range of approximately 144 decibels, which is actually quite good. But 32-bit float has a massive range of 1,500 decibels. So what's the benefit though of recording in 32-bit float? Well, in 16 and 24-bit, there's a maximum level the audio can go known as zero dBFS, where dB stands for decibels, and the FS stands for full scale. And when a signal tries to go beyond this, it'll get cut off, also known as clipping. And this is not the case for 32-bit float, as it has such a massive dynamic range and uses multiple analog to digital converters, it can record the quietest of sounds to the very loudest, and it's why people say it never clips. However, 32-bit float is not better quality than 24-bit. It's just that 32-bit float is able to capture a much larger dynamic range that can be manipulated in post. So here I have a sine wave tone. I'm gonna amplify this signal so that it goes above zero dBFS. So say these simulate recordings in the field and the sound was too loud when recording. Then I'll save this amplified sound back out in 16-bit, 24-bit and 32-bit float. Then I'll bring it back into the editor and I'll decrease the gain. And as we can see, 16-bit and 24-bit signals have been clipped and the data above this is gone. Meaning, if you have very loud or very soft sounds beyond their dynamic range limits, it can capture this data and it gets lost. But we can see that the 32-bit float, however, we can bring the gain back down and all the data is still there. So the takeaway is that we can restore loud audio above zero dBFS with 32-bit float. But non-float formats like 16 and 24-bit cut off the audio at zero dBFS. But what about very quiet sounds? Well, let's go the other way and see the results. This time we have the same normal sine wave again. But this time let's drop the gain or amplitude by minus 120 decibels. Then say this out again as 16, 24 and 32-bit files. Now I brought these files back into the editor and increased the gain back to the original value. In 16-bit, we have static noise and no detail at all. It's just hiss. In 24-bit, we have a sine wave, but with a lot of static noise and distortion. But in 32-bit, we have all the data restored back to the original. 
Traditionally, when recording sound, the first thing you need to do is adjust the gain of the signal. We're told to make sure that the volume gain level stays in the green area and doesn't clip in the red. Or as a rule of thumb, your sound should be between minus 24 dB and 8 dB. What gain does is match the sensitivity of the recording system to the level of the sound being recorded. Think of it like a sliding range to stay within. And if we record within this range, we get a good quality recording. If you record at the bottom of the range window, your recording will be noisy with a lot of hiss. And if you record at the top of the window range, your recording will be distorted and sound harsh. So the gain knob moves this range or window around to get the best recording. For quiet sounds, you slide the window down by turning up your gain so that the signal falls within the good range in the window. For loud sound, we slide the gain down to place the signal in the best range within the window. Well, in 32-bit float, you don't have to worry about setting the gain perfectly, as it cleverly uses special preamp techniques that allow multiple analog to digital converters to be stacked and combines this signal to output a 32-bit float signal. So this means you've now captured the full dynamic range of the audio information from the microphone, and you have the ability to alter the gain after you've recorded it in post. So whether you're recording as very quiet sounds or really loud sounds, in post you'll be able to move that gain window around without any loss of information. Now this doesn't mean that 32-bit float is a magical fix-all. You'll still need to follow good audio rules like mic placement, but following the normal audio guides helps you get the best possible audio you can at recording. Remember, crappio audio in is crappy audio out. If you're too close to the mic, causing plosives, that pff, pff sound, even in 32-bit float, it doesn't magically fix it. So let's take a trip out into the real world and how they can be adjusted back in post. So I'm talking really, really, really loud with 32-bit float on to see whether it will clip or not. This is 32-bit float, really, really, really loud. I'm gonna whisper now and see if you can hear me. There's still quite a lot of traffic behind the camera over that way, but the sprinklers have stopped behind me and I'm really, really whispering. Okay, so we have both clips in here. One is with me shouting into the microphone here, and the other one is me um, just whispering into the microphone. So we have both extremes. In the first one, if we take a look here, we can see it's clipping if we play it. This is 32-bit float, really, really, really loud. So you can hear that um, it's really loud. It's clipping on the meter over here. And then also, I have a lot of plosives, those p, p, p. And that's the reason why you should never have your, your microphone up against your mouth like this. That's terrible mic placement. So you still need to be able to keep the mic in the right place and follow all the guidelines you would when recording audio. All right? So that's the first one. So what we're going to do here is just adjust the gain because we have recorded in 32-bit float. Now, 32-bit float is not gonna get rid of those plosive sounds. So bad audio in is bad audio out, but I can adjust the gain just by right-clicking, go into audio gain, and then I can normalize the maximum peak to minus six. That's a good volume for talking. Say okay and watch this waveform. And now if we play it, we should get the maximum peak at around minus six here. Whether it will clip or not. This is 32-bit float, really, really, really loud. Now you can see it doesn't get rid of the plosives. Really, really, really loud with 32-bit float on. This but it makes the volume level normalized again. Or we can decrease it without losing the information. Now on the other one we have here is it's really really soft. That way. 
but the sprinklers have stopped behind me and I'm really, really whispering. So can you find me and hear me? So all we gotta do is the same thing. We just gotta raise this one up here. So we've got audio gain again. Let's normalize our max peak to negative six again. Say okay. And now, let's see if you can hear me. There's still quite a lot of traffic behind the camera over that way. But the sprinklers have stopped behind me. So there you go. I'm really, really whispering. So can We're able find to take different parts of the same uh, video footage or audio sound and then manipulate it so that you can raise or lower the gain as needed to recover bad audio. All right, hopefully that makes some more sense to you as far as 32-bit float goes and how you can manipulate it in post for the game. Uh, remember, bad audio in is bad audio out, so make sure you're following the good guidelines. Okay, let's move on to the next lesson. Ever since